Hello there, this is Carlo and welcome yet to another video and today we're going to be looking at uh, 3D photo scans. Um, I in general going to be using Agisoft's photo scanner. Um, when I went to uh, find uh, a piece of this software or one of these softwares, um, I did look hard on the internet, I won't lie to you. And there was a choice between, um, I'll just put up Google for a second, uh, this one and capturing uh, reality. Now, the difference is obviously price. I don't like the way that Capturing Reality have priced up their products. Um, and as you can see, I mean, it's $99 uh, for three months. I think it's a bit heavy on the price range for what it does. Um, even though this uh, actually does a better job uh, than the program that I'm using at the moment. But that's all based on, you know, how well um, uh, you use the program. And that's going to be the idea of this tutorial. I'm going to show you how to use uh, photo scan uh, to create some study models um, that you can bring over into ZBrush um, and just work on basically and create yourself a really nice 3D uh, study model. So, I mean, if you look at the price range on this and then you look at the price range on uh, Agisoft's version uh, of photo scan, I went for this version, which is the pro version. I just thought that the standard edition is not going to have as much features as this because the price range is too different um, as you can see there so um, I do have the beta version of capturing reality and don't get me wrong it is an awesome piece of software um, I just don't like the way they priced it and 15,000 I mean that is just absolutely uh, stupid money uh, for something that's not really a permanent license really I mean this is you know nearly seven and a half grand for one year license um, I just think that pricing is just absolutely ridiculous. So let's get into the tutorial. So here where I'm, we are in Photoscan, I've already got um, some photos already taken and the way you would do that is if I uh, show you, um, uh, this is a picture of a doll here um, that um, I got from their website. And as you can see, if I just open up the picture here, so I'm just gonna have to bring this over because I've got your monitors. It's just basically a standard picture of a doll um, and it's just been rotated around. Lots of pictures have been taken from different angles um, of this model. And then I'm going to implement this into uh, Photoscan to create uh, a model. So as you can see here, we've got the interface here. And for the time being, we're just going to be working within the workflow area, uh, which is basically uh, a follow on process uh, scheme. So you'll start at the top and you'll just work your way down um, until you come to the exporting uh, settings like an OBJ or an FBX file, so on and so on. So I'm going to have my photos. Uh, and here's my photos here. I'm just going to go to uh, this mode and I'm simply going to uh, just highlight all my photos and click open. And what's that, what that's going to do is drop it down here. Uh, into my uh, settings window or my library window shall I say and this is my 3d view so this is where I'm going to be seeing all the goodness happening now before we get started this is a uh, GPU and uh, processor intensive so the speed of how this will run will really depend on the speed of your machine um, I'm using a Z840 workstation so it's, it's pretty snappy it's pretty quick but there still is um, a time frame for how you uh, or how long you have to wait for the each process to uh, compile itself so what I try and do I try and do it in real time for you guys I may speed up a couple of things just to stop you from getting bored but yeah let's just get cracking so I've imported all my photos and I'm gonna come back up to workflow and then I'm gonna go to align photos and what this is gonna do is bring this box up here I'm, I'm gonna keep it on medium because if you go to high and ultra high it's gonna take a lot longer because um, it's going to do more of a detailed job. Um, key point limits is set to 40,000. You can keep all this the same. And the adaptive camera modeling fitting is basically the, the camera angles that these photos are taken. So I'm simply going to click OK. Um, and this is going to start the process of stitching all these photos together. Uh, like I said, it all depends on the speed of your system. Uh, it depends how long this process will take. But um, I'll speed this up now for you guys uh, so you're not bored and don't end up falling asleep. Um, and we'll get to the next process after this is uh, finished doing what it's doing. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so that is complete. Now, we've got our first dense cloud or uh, cloud mesh here, and I'm just gonna hold down shift, and if I hold down shift, and press the right, uh, right mouse button, I can sort of zoom in and out there if I scroll backwards and forward, or if I press the left mouse button and shift, I can sort of pan around. Um, firstly, this will allow us to sort of orbit the model um, if we bring our thing here. As you can see, um, all these little specs here are gonna basically uh, interfere with the actual uh, outcome uh, of the model. So if I hold down Alt, um, I can sort of pan around like this with the left mouse button, zoom in and out. Uh, this will sort of tilt it sort of sideways. Hold down Shift and this will zoom in and out like I've just said and then we can use this to sort of uh, pan around our model. Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have to clean this up. Uh, to get a much uh, better uh, model otherwise. All these little dots you can see here are gonna end up in the final mesh uh, when we bind it together. So, in order to do that, we've got some lasso tools here. So we've got a rectangle, circle, and a lasso tool here. And uh, we're basically gonna select these, uh, one of these. I usually use a lasso tool. And I'm simply gonna click on that. And then I can hold down and just simply uh, go around the parts. They will highlight pink. And I'm just going to delete and I'm going to keep doing that until um, all my points uh, are cleaned up so all I've got in the middle is uh, my model which is uh, nice and clean so I'm going to speed this up as I do this process um, so yeah I'll just speed it up So we're nearly done here, we've just got a few more points um, around the actual model itself, like just loosen around that. You can leave it, it's entirely up to you, but you know, I like to get it nice and neat model, so obviously these are going to be picked up on the geometry and you don't want all these bits and bobs in your geometry, so that's why I sort of try and keep it as neat uh, and as flush to the model um, as I possibly can. Uh, it, it would just give you a better model at the end of the day. Um, this is uh, a job that um, Capture and Reality does a lot better than this software. Um, but, you know, patience is a virtue at the end of the day. And to save yourself 15 grand um, and only pay three, um, it's worth just spending a bit of time um, just to, you know, get this person like these little points here. I don't really want um, this little point here. It's just gonna give you a much better finish um, at the end of the project. So that's looking pretty cool. We've got a couple here that we can get rid of. Maybe a point here, get rid of. Just zoom in. Be patient with it. Um, and it will be worth it in the end. Right, so that's not looking too bad. I'm sort of happy with that. Don't forget to select on your arrow tool, otherwise um, you're going to end up uh, scrolling bits that you don't. There's another bit there we can get rid of, actually. So let's go back to my lasso tool. Let's get rid of that bit. Be, 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 be as precise as you can, and it's worth it in the end. There's a little bit there. And that can go. Yeah, and that's not looking too bad uh, at all. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into a dense cloud. So if we open this selection here, um, we're gonna have some tire points here. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, build a dense cloud now. So uh, this is quite time consuming as well. Um, I'm gonna set this to medium. If you set this to higher ultra, it's gonna take a lot longer. And depending on the speed of your computer, um, it, it's gonna put a lot of strain on your computer. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna get cracking with that. And I'll just speed it up uh, while this is being done.
Okay, so that part is done, uh, which is great. So now if I click on Dense Cloud and come up to here and click this little icon, um, I'm gonna get a rough idea of, you know, uh, where we're going. And also, um, I'm gonna see points that I can also get rid of in real time. So I'm gonna get my lasso tool, and you see these bits here, I can start uh, polishing up the model and depending on the speed of your machine, um, it's gonna update uh, flawlessly in real time. Um, I've got quite, well, I've got a Z8 Ford workstation, so it's a powerful system. Um, so it's not actually a problem to do this in real time and it just render it on the fly. Right, so I'm just gonna do this and then I'm just gonna get rid of all this rubbish here and just polish it up um, the best I can. Um, I'm just gonna click on this here and then rotate to maybe a top view. Um, just bring it over and here I'm gonna get a lot more idea of what needs to be cleaned in the, in the scene or on the model. So I can get rid of this stuff here and it's gonna update in real time and just be as precise uh, with it as you possibly can. Let's just zoom right in. You don't want these in the final model with these little bits, little rubbish bits, you, you know, because they will show up in the final mesh because you've not got rid of it. So it's just about being as precise um, as you possibly can. Don't be scared to spend a bit of time um, just, you know, making it look good, basically. You see here, as we zoom in, you can see there's parts of the mesh that really don't need to be there. Um, and we could just spend a bit of time just, uh, you know, fine tuning the edges. So when we take it to put ZBrush, um, there's not gonna be a lot to do when it comes to the polishing of the actual model. I'm just gonna run this all the way over and just um, tidy it up basically best I can. Try and be careful that you don't go over the model itself. Very important, just be as precise as you can. It's just like drawing a picture basically. Um, so that bit's okay, let's uh, come out of that, click that arrow and just check this mesh out um, the best we can. Uh, this is the bottom bit so it's not too bad. Let's just um, all bit up a bit. Maybe we can uh, finesse uh, the edge in here, uh, but we are we are when we finish the project and it finally goes over to our main modeler like um, Cinema or something like that. You can add a plane and uh, just take these little bits away. It's just bits that don't really need to be there, so I'm just basically uh, polishing up the edges. So we get a finer uh, finish when we actually. Uh, uh, add our mask, so I don't really need that to be there, really. Uh, remember, always remember to click back to your uh, arrow tool just in case you um, accidentally delete part of the model that you don't want to delete. See, we've got parts here that we don't really need to be there, so we can. Uh, Okay, that's so tall there. And just delete these bits here. And I'm just trying to show you this all in real time so you can get a rough understanding of um, how fine you sort of need to be uh, in order to get the most realistic uh, model possible, really. But that doesn't look too bad. I'm happy with that for the tutorial. Uh, let's just zoom back out. As you can see, it's looking pretty dope. Let's just uh, straighten it out. And this is where the magic's gonna start happening. So I've got a bit there that I'm not happy with. My OCD's kicking in there. So I'm just gonna get rid of this bit here. Um, so that's not too bad. So after you've done that, let's click on our come to workflow and let's build a mesh. Now again, it's another stage of the process. You can keep all the settings to standard. But if you do decide to go to high, remember you need to have a, a beefy computer. Um, in order to do it, otherwise it's gonna take you literally hours uh, to do, do this. Normally I can do this in about three or four minutes, so I'm just gonna press uh, the start button, and this is where it's gonna combine everything you've done and place it into a mesh, 
um, which can be edited in uh, 3ds Max or Cinema 4D. And if you create yourself, say for instance, a figure um, in this technique, you can add uh, bones and limbs and all that goodness uh, to make it move. Um, if you get the, uh, the geometry right uh, within your photos that you take. So, very quick, uh, just under a minute to do this. So I'm quickly gonna speed this up and then we'll go to the next stage uh, after that. Right, so here we are. Um, we're nearly finished. And as you can probably see, it is looking pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, we are getting there, let's zoom out. And let's just uh, go to uh, a 3D model um, and just, if we select these icons, it will give us uh, a rough idea of what the finished uh, product's gonna look like or what it does look like. And it's not looking too bad at all. And the reason why we're gonna throw this into ZBrush is because ZBrush will allow us to paint on this um, and just uh, finesse it and sharpen it up and just to make it look really, really good. But as you can see, it's not looking too bad um, at all. Um, it's just looking pretty, pretty awesome. So um, I'm gonna click on this button here, uh, which is region resize. And I'm just gonna um, grab these points and just make my region um, a hell of a lot smaller because there's too much region here for this model. Um, so I'm just going to bring this down, I'm going to zoom in, uh, use my same controls to, um, yeah, it's too much um, box for that, so I just want to keep this nice and confined uh, to this box, uh, which is cool. And that's fine like that, that's absolutely fine. So that is basically near enough done. So we're going to cut the window. Um, and we're going to click on build textures. Okay, so this is the next step. We're going to build the texture for our model. So I'm going to click OK. And this is another process uh, you have to run through. Normally, this is a lot quicker because this is basically just texture building. So um, we we'll just wait for that to complete the process. Um, and then we can jump over to ZBrush, or sorry, export this model, um, and then jump over to ZBrush. Um, uh, where you can see it in ZBrush basically. So 30 seconds to go, pretty quick. Um, and it's amazing how these programs work, it really is. And if the, the possibilities uh, for modeling um, is absolutely stunning. You get it right and you can create some really cool stuff uh, using software. Um, especially when you bring it into uh, Cinema or 3ds Max or Maya for final touch-ups. Add some beautiful light into it, a nice plane, and you've got something pretty goddamn cool. Let's just speed this up. Okay, so that has built our textures and it's it's looking pretty awesome. Um, let me slip to my arrow. As you can see, uh, we've got a really nice uh, piece of geometry here, which is gonna be very, very nice uh, when we add it to um, uh, uh, ZBrush or ZBrush. Uh, so let's do that now. So we're gonna come to File and we're gonna click on Export Model. Um, I'm gonna, I've got already done it uh, already here. So I'm just gonna call this Dolly to mesh, uh, make sure it's to my desktop. I'm gonna click that save, keep everything the same. Uh, click OK, and that should export that to a OBJ. And I come up to file, and I go to export. Uh, no, we've already done that, we've already exported section. So um, that's done on that part. So let's just close out of this, and let's uh, open up ZBrush. And we're just going to bring this model into ZBrush once ZBrush is opened. Uh, 
Now, while that's opening, um, you can see that it's created a Dolly Mesh uh, as an OBJ and an MTL file as well. And it's created the uh, textures for that as well, which is very, 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 very cool. Um, why did I just say it like that? So I'm gonna come to File, I'm gonna go to Open, Desktop, and I'm just gonna find my model. is here so let's open this up let's hide this rubbish and let's just hold down the mouse and drag like this oh didn't want to do that so that's basically it there's the model um just zoom in there so as you can see um my model is uh, now in ZBrush. Uh, let's just uh, rotate it around. Uh, bring it to a decent position. But yeah, it's not not looking too bad, and this is going to allow me to basically brush on her um, and basically do what I want to her uh, within. Uh, uh, ZBrush. Uh, so let me just it's cool. Zoom in so here. Yeah, and now basically what I can do is just play around with um, the way she looks. So I can select on something like this, and I could you know, do this and basically do what I want to her uh, within uh, ZBrush to uh, make her look good uh, for uh, the model that's ready to export into uh, Cinema or 3DS Max. So yeah, pretty awesome, uh, pretty uh, cool thing uh, to do. Does that make sense? Does that sound too crazy? Um, just gonna have a look. Um, um, and it's just a nice way to, you know, really start, you know, making your model uh, what you really want it to be, you know, and start painting on it and working with it and just making it look really, really, really cool. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, as always, if you have guys, a like rating would definitely be appreciated. And as always, I will definitely catch you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.